welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is this, the 1965 Porsche 911. One of the very first Porsches to come off the production line, this particular example, chassis number 545. So super early. I've been very lucky in my career to drive an awful lot of 911s, but I haven't actually ever driven one of the very first 911s, which were subtly different to um, 70s 911s. At the beginning, they were very pure. Um, they had a number of distinct differences to them. They were two liter engines. And we all think of uh, early 911, something like the 2.7 RS. Well, that was some time, you know, that was, came in 1973. So a fair amount of development had happened. But when they first came out, there is a real sort of following for these super early 911s. And this particular one is extra special. I borrowed this car from James Turner at Sports Purpose, who are based at uh, Bista Heritage and he knows early 911s like no one else I know. Um, he, he set up that um, pre-66 two litre Porsche uh, racing cup uh, series, um, which has proved a huge hit right across Europe. But he always wanted to do his ultimate version of the early 911 and this is it. And you might also recognize it if you're at Goodwood Revival because it actually acted as the course car during the Revival meeting. So it was leading off the grids quite a few times. It, James Turner did 300 miles around Goodwood that particular weekend. But yeah, early 911s were strange things. Um, they had issues, shall we say. I've, I've got this lovely book by um, Paul Freyer. I bought this I was, I was studying at Agricultural College in the 80s and rather than reading manuals on tractors I read the Porsche 911 story instead. So I've owned this book for some time and the, there's a whole chapter on early problems and uh, there were significant problems because obviously they never no one had really done this six-cylinder engine overhanging at the rear axle. And when they'd finished development the engine was a little bit heavier than they had expected it to be and it has a significant weight bias, and that gave it interest in handling. They had to be super accurate on the chassis setup on it and the camber and towing and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, it all went a bit wrong on the production line and they weren't so accurate. And it describes the disastrous effect of sort of indifferent chassis setup as they left the production lines, lots of customers complaining, and it was also super unstable in uh, side winds. So the first thing Porsche did, according to this, was to add um, weight to the front. And they developed some overriders for this early 911 uh, made of lead. Each one made, uh, weighed 11 kilos and they stuck it on the front bumper. That was the easy fix, but it wasn't really a very good fix. They also had to drill the holes after doing the alignment to mount the suspension at the front. Anyway, it was a pretty unhappy period for nine, uh, Porsche at this period. And the technical director, if I can get, find his name, uh, uh, Mr. Tom Mara, um, actually resigned over it and a, a chap took over uh, chief development and his name was Ferdinand Piech and that happened in 1966. So those early 911s, very few came into the UK, there was about 40 odd a year sold in the UK by AFN but from 1970 once Ferdinand Piech got hold of this car things completely changed but I want to explain the story behind this early two litre car and as I say this is a very special car because James Turner at Sports Purpose has made it as good as he can. So this one, 2.2 litre, has a Tuttle engine in it. We'll have a look at it in a moment. And if you wanted to buy this car from James, well, I've had to insure it for £400,000. Let's go and have a look why it's so special. One great thing when you see this car for the first time, when you've got used to modern Porsches, is how small it is. You forget how dainty they were and compact they were. But they, when we get inside, there's quite a lot of space in there. But this um, early 911 like this is about 400 mil shorter than the 992 and 300 mil narrower. So a significant difference. But the key difference with these early cars, they had, they had a, Porsche had to find a better solution than putting lead on the front bumper to try and tame the handling. And what they decided to do is it's the rear. So this particular example is known as a short wheelbase 911. 
and you tell by this distance here because what they actually decided to do was lengthen the suspension arm there to put the wheel further back and it and, and after they did this change it sat 57 um, mil further towards the rear they didn't change engine and gearbox position just the rear wheel and you can sort of see what you've noticed if you take the center line of that wheel and come up it sort of hits here on this window here and if you look at a later it's about 66 or 67 i should know when the change happened it's about here so they this rear arch slightly changed the actual pressing to bring the wheel back nothing else the, the overall length and everything is the same it was just the wheel that changed and made it slightly longer wheelbase but oh, it's such a clean shape, this particular example. You come around here, it's early sort of lettering. I just love this gold. This one, I also like the way James has actually done hand-painted number plate on it. I mean, this car, 1965, is closer to its 60th birthday than its 50th birthday. And look at it, it's just so recognisable, 911. It's remarkable how they've not changed. I'm just going to lift the engine uh, lid. Now, I love this engine bay. Porsches are not normally worth looking at, but this one certainly is. So this one has twin Webers on it rather than Solex it left the factory with and enlarged to 2.2 litres by um, Tuttle's, Richard Tuttle, um, just up the road from here. And it puts out 200 horsepower, 160 foot pound of torque. It's, got so many trick bits on it it's got twin plug heads so there's 12 spark leads coming out of the distributor because each cylinder has two spark plugs it's it's so the webers seem to work a lot better than solex you can see the double um, ignition system here and also at the side here the two coils due to this twin ignition um, it's had it's got different cams in it and it's very close to the race series uh, engine but in last to 2.2 litres and when we get to drive it where well, you'll see what a gem of an engine that is again you recognize an early 911 by that sort of sloping um, bonnet line and they're here they've tried to dress this a lot better because they're always a bit scruffy in the um, front of a 911 the carpet sort of sagging everywhere so they put a bulkhead i just love this trim uh, this sort of closed loop trim it's so german and so neat this particular one doesn't have a battery here they put a lithium battery that sits under there again for lightweight because this car is just on about a thousand kilos in weight so even even though it's only got 200 horsepower it's quite a lively thing the other change they've done um, this has equal size wheels front to rear actually when the uh, 911 first arrived it had four and a half j uh, rims on it steel rims tiny tiny rims with 165 tires on it this has grown i think this is 185 yeah 185 70 by 15 so but six inch rims and the same size front to rear anyway what this car is all about is the driving so let's take it outside now into this bucket seat and uh, it's weird even in 1965 the dash is very recognizable as 911 they just basically didn't change it for decades with that central taco and on this example with a 10,000 goes up to 10,000 rpm which is slightly optimistic because it's about seven and a half thousand the, the cutout on it but uh, yeah, and sort of airy, weird, it's small dimensions outside and an inside, because there's no big transmission tunnel on a 911. It's all sort of open on the floor and I've got a very good visibility of the passenger's legs if I want it. And uh, yeah, the rear, same sort of thing. Lovely trim in here, this sort of Colony hide. I don't exactly know what it is, but it's super soft, just perfect. The, the leather on this, and as I say, I just love the carpet on here. I'm thinking of using this in the Lancia. So yeah, all very nice. I'm going to start the engine. Yes, little wand of a gear change there with bespoke um, gear knob on it that um, James Taylor had sort of made especially for this car. And it's a quick change we'll get to. Oh, I ought to mention the Momo wheel as well. This is a period Momo wheel. And not, yeah, purists of these early 911s will go, it's one of those wheels. It's sort of thin rimmed. It's the race wheel, just delightful. As is this seat, the Recaro seat, which I'll mention in a moment. 
but yeah oh and the other thing anybody who's owned a beetle like i have lots of them you will recognize the key that very distinctive shape but it's also porsche 911 so if you own a beetle this appear and say oh i've got a porsche 911 key oh, listen to that just that energy that different sound of 911 comes alive as soon as you turn the key and this engine basically hasn't hasn't been fitted with a flywheel unfortunately so it just the revs just flare and drop back instantly it's also getting quite warm in here because uh, yeah, ventilation is well heating's good as anybody again who's owned a beetle the, the, the heating on a 911 of this age comes off the exhaust so it soon warms up in here because it's much hotter than you get with a water-cooled cooling uh, sort of heating system for the car and they go they, they wrap it around the exhaust and that's what the, that's the air you get in the in, uh, into the cabin the downside is you get a slight whiff of uh, engine um, oils and things which is very familiar right anyway let's get going oh sound already so anyway i'm going to head out you'll join me on some better roads in a moment now the distinctive sound of 911 is about to hit you did a noise test down there and it's around the 85 86 decibels at 60 miles an hour in here so it's noisy for a road car but wow what noises they are as you heard back there um oh, just talking about noise a lot of you asked what um, app i use to measure sound with and it's called db meter pro i will do a photo of it now so you can need to want to download it you can but uh, oh the first time I drove this it was just ace that sound it's it's condensed 911 sound and it's just there and I think it's helped by actually having those KN filters that induction bar but it's a whole mix of sounds and uh, it's just lovely to be in an early 911 um, air-cooled 911 and get those sound in their purest form other things, gear change. Um, they're never the best gear changes on early 911s. This has a, um, a short throw one. I think it's actually better. I, I'm last sort of early 911 I drove was a 2.7 RS, and they can be a pretty awful gear change. Sort of lots of movement in it if it hasn't been really rebushed recently. This one much tighter. Um, plane over to first and reverse. It's dog leg gearbox on here and then it frees up and you've got um, second, third, fourth, fifth in an H pattern, but there's no real detent. You have to know where you are in the gearbox. And if you first step into it, you might struggle with the gear change, but it's all part of the learning process. The other thing, this seat, I'm actually gonna open this. I have these quarter vents rather than opening the window. Um, this seat is low, squeezing me, and it, it's yeah it's not my favorite thing i love the look of it i want to love it but it's i'm struggling with sitting in it but then i forget about it when i hear that very simple dash the lights switch is still in the same place just down there pull this is the um, fill them um, refueling and then there's heated screen things there this bit of wood going all the way across the dash um, James did that of a piece of wood that they had at their unit of Vista Heritage and had it polished up and that's that bit of wood there. Tuttle suspension on here as well from the race cars but obviously recalibrated. Much more um, damping, more uh, bump absorption than the race cars have got so probably not as low. But yeah, it's, it's over, at the moment it's just overload 911. It's just, it, 
amazing. And you've got to remember also, and I mentioned that weight of a thousand kilos, it's 500 kilos lighter than a current 911. Half a ton lighter. You can sort of tell that by the lack of toys and things and the size of it. It's also got a really short first gear. It's only just over 30 miles an hour in, in first. I was looking back period and it did yeah a standard two litre was 6.3 seconds to 50 miles an hour when motor tested it. Um, this one is a fair bit quicker than that. What should I use? So I'm in I'm in third at the moment, you know what I might try second. There we are approaching the, the sort of charge out of birth so 30 miles an hour here I am 3000 RPM listen to this Expensive engine though, I mean it really delivers the goods and sounds just glorious, that sounds unburstable, it probably is. Um, aluminium uh, crankcase as well rather than magnesium, apparently it's preferred for the higher horsepower cars. You don't get much change from £90,000 if you want an engine like in this sort of spec. It's got a different cam profile as well from the racers. Oh, but the pickup and the way you can just blip it and then oh, and it's coming on cam. Oh. Yeah. oh, just great. more expensive and if you wanted the 911S 
well that was four and a half thousand pounds sir so yeah tw over twice the price of an e-type i think that I, I really ought to do a list of likes and dislikes and starting with the dislikes first luckily i've had this car for a few days and i jump in it and i just want to drive it again the only thing that puts me off is actually the seat i just don't get on with the seat and the fixed position but that is purely the choice of the owner of this car it is a very you know a lovely seat to have the original recaro seat is worth which is why i do actually find a fairly skimpy passenger seat a bit more comfortable and then the, the sort of the noise and the sound i just yeah shame that the quite a rowdy thing because you want to use it all the time but I, I don't know what I'd do about it I have to mention it though I always have to mention the price I wish it wasn't so expensive but I can see the quality that and the work that's gone into it's over a thousand man hours to create this thing but it just shows 60 years of development has brought this thing to the you know to this standard it's glorious oh the revs the way they flare